This is not just a pork sausage. This is a cultivated meat pork sausage grown in a lab from pluripotent animal cells. But to understand just what that means, let's go backwards, from dinner plate all the way back to cell plate. Roslyn Tech are a company based just outside Edinburgh who are looking to supply starter cells to companies all over the world who could then grow that into meat on a commercial scale. The cells come from a small biopsy from an animal, which means it doesn't need to be slaughtered, and they've then been reprogrammed. So what is it about the particular line of cells that you're producing that is unique? What we try to do is make cells pluripotent, so very similar to the origin of life. So cells that can continuously self-renew. Let, let me illustrate it with an example. So our cells, they double twen every 24 hours. So if I take a cell on day one, I have two on day two. After three days, I have four cells. Wait roughly 42 days, and I have enough cells to fill kind of a bottle this size. And after 63 days, I have enough cells to fill a swimming pool. So with one single cell, you can make millions of tons of meat. The cells are frozen and packed, ready for shipping to lab-grown meat companies all over the world. So Jackie, we've come through here to see the next part of the process. Talk to me about this piece of equipment and what it's doing. This piece of equipment is a bioreactor similar to what you get on a much larger scale in a brewery, for example, where you can take lots of cells and amplify them. And our goal here is to get as much mass as possible of the cells for the preparation of prototypes. And we would share that data with our cultivated meat customers. So are these little flecks that we can see meat? Well, these are not individual cells. What we find is that the little piggy cells like to clump together and be with each other, which is great actually for cultivated meat because we don't have to add any special microcarriers in to let the um, cells swirl in solution. At the moment, at this scale, you're producing quite small amounts. And if a company was to be doing this on a large commercial scale, what kind of size of bioreactor are we talking about? Oh, um, several thousand, perhaps up to 100,000 litres for, you know, the full scale cultivated meat companies of the future. And if renewable energy is used to power those bioreactors, it could be a greener way to generate meat. So we've come to a part of the lab that you might not expect. We're in the kitchen and that's because those little flecks that you saw spinning around in the bioreactor have been harvested and they now look like this. Now Ellen is going to combine them with some other ingredients and we're going to cook a sausage. How do you decide what to put in then? You've got quite a little kitchen going here. Um, is it just personal taste? Uh, yes, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say it compares to a, a regular sausage? Is it cooking in the same sort of way? Yeah, it's really straightforward to cook. You just put it in the frying pan. Uh, for five to ten minutes mm -hmm. and it should be cooked all the way through. A simple sausage like this would still cost hundreds of pounds to produce, but it's hoped in the future being able to scale up will bring costs down. Yeah, should we have a look? So there we have it, the finished product. Now, we aren't able to taste this sausage because it doesn't yet have regulatory approval here in the UK, but we're going to cut it open and have a little sniff. Okay, so texture-wise, it looks like a sausage. And it smells like a sausage. It smells like chicken. Yeah. Let's see if it tastes like chicken. Singapore approved lab-grown chicken meat for consumption two years ago. But here in the UK, approval is still some years off. Roslyn Tech say they don't believe cultivated meat will altogether replace traditional meat production, but rather that there'll be room at the table for both.